Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's devotion on September 22nd, 2020. Uh, for those of you that haven't met me or seen me before, I'm Reverend Carolyn Dugan. I belong to the Federated Church of Green Lake uh, here in Wisconsin. However, this past summer and kind of during this pandemic stay-at-home time, I was joining the nightly devotionals, and I'm glad that I can have another opportunity uh, to share a different practice that I use uh, when I read and study the Bible. Um, today, I, the three choices that I have for the scripture are Psalm 119, 97 through 104, uh, or the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, and then the last one is Romans 16, verses 17 through 20. And today I want to focus on the book of Numbers. Uh, I tend to be an Old Testament girl. I'm not sure why, uh, but I'm drawn to some of the imagery and the things that are happening there. Uh, when I have a choice, that's kind of where I lean towards. Uh, so today, though, what I want to do is we're going to use a practice called florilegium. And I learned this practice uh, actually by listening to a podcast called Harry Potter and the Sacred Text. And it's a couple of people who are reading through the books of Harry Potter chapter by chapter. And they use these different contemplative practices while they're reading the book of Harry Potter. Uh, so they've used Lectio Divina with Harry Potter and then this Florilegium. And Florilegium means sparkling flower. Uh, so what I learned is this was a practice kind of done by monks back in the day. And as you're reading and as you're listening, do words sparkle at you? Uh, do they jump out? And with this practice, what I've done is we kind of like pick one word um, and then we see where does that word lead and what's going on with this. And I've done this practice in groups before, but for maybe a, a weekend session where we're trying to focus in on and we'll take the passage that's set for the weekend and we'll see where people kind of dive in. And that gives us a direction on where to go. Uh, a couple of summers ago, I actually used this with the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 30. I read a verse a day and I wrote down the word that came to me from each verse. And some of the verses are small, so it was easy to kind of pick a word that sparkled at me. But as I read through all of the words that I picked through what, those 32, 33 verses, I tended to see patterns in my thinking and in my thought process and how I saw the world kind of jump out at me. So it was an interesting way to read and dive into and maybe hear a message just a little bit differently. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna read Numbers chapter 11, verses one through nine. And if you are a visual learner and you want to read along, pause right now, get your Bible, have it ready. Um, I'm reading from the ESV version, so your words might be slightly different. And then after I'm done reading, I'll share what my Florilegium word was today and kind of why I think it's there. And, you know, I would encourage you to, to share or journal or write down what your Florilegium word is. So what word jumped out at you? So again, I'm reading from Numbers chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses and Moses prayed to the Lord and the fire died down. So the name of that place was called Tabera because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Now the rabble that was among them had a strong craving and the people of Israel also wept again and said, oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Now the manna was like coriander seed and its appearance like that of a delium. The people went about and gathered it and ground it in hand mills or beat it in mortars and boiled it in pots and made cakes of it. 
and the taste of it was like the taste of cakes baked with oil. When the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell with it. So what word sparkled at you? What word jumped out at you? So as I was preparing, the word that jumped out at me was complaining, complained. And I've, I've done research on this passage before, and, and that's kind of why I picked it too, is the word complained is murmuring. So the people were murmuring as they were being provided for, as they were being led out of Egypt into the promised land. It seemed to be going on forever. Sound familiar? Is there anything right now that seems to be going on forever with maybe no end in sight? But all of our cares, our needs are being met. However, are we still maybe murmuring? Or are there people around us that are maybe murmuring, that are complaining, that are not necessarily helping the situation because they want to go back to normal? They want to go back to what we had. And I guess, I think the reason that the complaining always jumps out at me is because I tend to romanticize a little bit. I tend to look back and go, oh, it was so much better back when. When maybe it, it really wasn't. And I'm just kind of remembering the bits and pieces that I want to remember. And there may be something good coming. There may be out of this whole pandemic, out of all of this, you know, no end in sight, it's giving us a chance to look forward to something because we're, we're not necessarily going to be able to go back to how it was. And I don't know if we want to go back to how it was. You know, for the people in the story, they, do they really want to go back to Egypt? Do they really want to go back under Pharaoh's thumb under Pharaoh's guide, you know, Moses had done a lot to get these people free and for them, you know, to leave. And just because that we are in this time, it, there's no promise that it's going to be easy. Uh, there's no promise that we're always going to have the things that we're used to, the things that are our comfort, uh, those pieces. Um, and now I'm going to cheat a little bit because I did have a second word. And, and my second word was rabble. And the reason I think that that word jumped out at me is because of the other reading, uh, which is Romans 16, 17 through 20. Now, for those of you that may have gone to a church camp over the years, um, especially, at, you know, if, if you've ever been to Camp Tamarack, which is where I was for several years, um, if I were to say Romans, yeah, 16, yeah, 19 says, says what? You'll remember that whole song. If you want me to sing the whole thing at some point, we can do that. But hopefully that sparked a good memory or something for somebody. But Romans 16, verses 17 through 20 reads, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, but I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent as to what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So are there any rabble that are trying to get into our heads, trying to get into our space? And, and maybe they are truly intending to do it and, and maybe it's not intentional. But I urge you today to, to think about your words. What were the words that sparkled for you as you read the passage, as you listened to the passage? And for me, I could see a definite connection between the Numbers passage and the Romans passage today. And I, I'm going to meditate a little bit more tonight on if I'm leaving Egypt and I'm moving forward, why am I complaining? What am I murmuring about? 
And are there people, are there rabble in my life that I need to not listen to, that I need to stay on my course, the course that God has placed me on and continue to move forward there. So I ask you to pray with me. Creator God, the one who provides the manna in whatever form that looks like for us, as whatever our journey is, whatever Egypt is that we are leaving, that we are walking towards something else, may we not complain. May we not murmur. May we not be the rabble that is causing issues and division. But may we seek to do your will. God, in your name, we pray these things and we ask that you hold each one of us in the palm of your hand and keep us safe. Amen.